in the 2020 election, I should say, uh, Biden claimed that if Donald Trump was president for another four years, we would be, quote, in a full-blown war with Iran. Come on in, Joe Concha, we need you. We're now involved in two separate wars. We've got China looking to invade Taiwan. Are we ever going to hear the media call Biden out for all of this? Well, on the contrary, Stu, mm -hmm. Iran was infinitely weaker during the Trump administration. Uh, billions of dollars weren't being sent to that country, only to be largely be used to train terror proxies like Hamas, who carried out those horrific attacks against Israel, as we saw on October 7th. Trump pulled out of the toothless Iran deal, you may recall, and also General Soleimani uh, was killed in an airstrike ordered by Trump, and that sent a clear message that the U.S. was not to be toyed with. Under President Biden, yep. we saw that patently chaotic withdrawal out of Afghanistan that left 13 U.S. service members dead. We saw Russia walk into Ukraine. That war is now, what, 26 months old? Yeah. And there doesn't appear to be any negotiation in the site uh, when there's a hopeless stalemate on the eastern front. We're seeing China's posture towards Taiwan only increased by the day. And overall, the world is as unstable as it has been, Stu, quite frankly, in the 21st century. So those are the facts, and no spin yep. can save that. Well, that's very true. Trump's hush money trial underway in New York City. The liberal media is just salivating over this. Joe, just watch this. Roll tape. Okay. Now to history in the making. Tomorrow in New York, Donald Trump faces a rendezvous with justice, becoming the first former American president to stand trial for a criminal offense. I don't know the playbook, but I understand that Donald Trump is going to come out every day and just, you know, try to, you know, just pour hot water on, on the proceedings. Trump has thrown Hail Mary after Hail Mary to try to prevent his trial from happening. The history books are going to record what happens tomorrow, and the history books are going to record what, happen, what will happen in the day and months moving forward. You know, <laughs> the media is celebrating the trial. They want to tie him down in court so he can't campaign. You know, this is just another example of a media run riot in the wrong damn direction. Excuse my language, but in the wrong direction. Yes, dude, not, not just... I know, exactly. Uh, not only can't Trump uh, campaign on, on a day like this, but also the Biden administration, the Biden record, then gets completely wiped off uh, the news cycle. And, and this CNN headline, Stu, is so typical of the coverage. Quote, Trump's first criminal trial is a historic and solemn moment for America, unquote. Oh, please, there is nothing solemn about the coverage today. It is borderline euphoric and over the top to the point of being cheesy. I mean, hundreds of print reporters have descended on lower Manhattan. Uh, the main theme seemingly by many covering this with zero plans for objectivity is that Trump is guilty until proven innocent. And as Jonathan Turley, who is as respected as any legal expert is out there in the business, uh, he said that this is an unprecedented attempt to revive a misdemeanor for falsifying business documents that expired years ago. Turley, quote, if that is the basis of Thursday's indictment, which was last uh, last week, Biden could not have raised a weaker basis to prosecute a former president. Uh, so it, what we have here, Stu, is that, remember, prosecutors years ago, as well as the, as the Trump special counsel, Robert Mueller, they both refused to pursue this case. One big reason, they had major reservations about the prime witness uh, here, who obviously is Michael Cohen, uh, a darling on CNN and MSNBC, Trump's former personal attorney, of course. Uh, he has been called a serial perjurer. Uh, but this case is being tried in Manhattan, uh, where you can expect to find, well, you know, Edward Snowden before you could find too many true Trump supporters. And that's what Alvin Bragg is counting on, the fact right. that only something like 12 percent of Manhattan voted for Donald Trump in 2020. The jury is biased against him. Lack of evidence of a felony be damned and just roll the dice and take your chances. Uh, they're trying to keep him off the campaign trial because he's got to be at the trial because it's a criminal trial. So he's got to be in court. Yeah, I think that's going to backfire. Because after every day's court proceedings, he will walk outside and hold an expansive press conference saying everything and anything that he wants to say. Recapture the ground. Last word to you, Joe. Sure. Uh, there's a poll out today, I believe it's from Echelon, shows that Donald Trump is leading in six of seven swing states, quite comfortably, I might add. And in that seventh swing state, which is Wisconsin, he's in a statistical dead heat. So after all these trials and all this attention on the legal process or lack thereof legal process, uh, it's only seemingly to have a, a boomerang effect that is only providing jet fuel for the Trump campaign because it does look like the weaponization of the justice system and election interference to many people, including independents in those key states, too. Got it. Joe Concha, thanks for being with us. See you again real soon, Joe. Good man. Thank you.